The PlayStation 2 is one of the consoles with the most video games released for it so far, so therefore, there are a lot of games that are underrated. Games are maybe popular, maybe not. Probably you already know them, but I don't think they're rated properly. So here are five games on the PlayStation 2 that I think are underrated. Let's begin! Number 5. Chaos Legion This game was made by Capcom in an attempt to create something similar to Devil May Cry but with some small RPG elements. It's a hack and slash alright, but not as fast and mindless as most of them. This one is rather technical as it revolves around the main character Sieg having the ability to control summons called Legions. Each one of them will play differently with their abilities and skills, they will gain experience and improve the more you fight and complete missions. It plays similar to Castlevania Curse of Darkness now that I think about it. Also, the game has a twisted and dark as hell story. It doesn't focus too much on it, but sometimes it feels very powerful and present. Since it's very hard and not too friendly to newcomers, don't expect an easy time with it, but if you give it a few tries and endure, I can at least vouch for it becoming a rather unique experience. Number 4. Metal Slug 5 This classic run and gun was released on the Neo Geo and the MVS Arcade later ported to the Xbox, PS2, PC, and Switch. And it was also included in the popular Metal Slug Anthology collection. So why is it here? Because if there had to be one Metal Slug in the series, 5 will be my pick. I think it's an amazing game, brutally hard like all of them, perhaps harder than most. The soundtrack is also extremely good with metal and rock themes galore. But it's basically underrated for being overshadowed by the first games in the series, including X, which are often considered as the best. After the fourth title, which was developed by a Korean studio, fans were slightly disappointed with the music and the art style. SNK and Noise Factory were back to develop the fifth game, but by then they had already lost a lot of fan interest. In fact, the North American PS2 version was released alongside the fourth game, and it's also pretty darn decent by the way. 5 is much better in my opinion, and I dare say, it's actually one of the best. Number 3. Eco. Yes, it's a very well-known game, I know, but very, very overshadowed by the legendary Shadow of the Colossus. That game even got the PS4 HD remaster treatment. Eco did not. All it got was a compilation on the PS3 alongside Colossus, so it's overshadowed once again. Eco is an adventure game and an environmental puzzle with a protagonist with the title name. He is imprisoned in a huge abandoned fortress, so he must find a way to escape. But on the way, he also sees another prisoner, a very strange woman with weird skin, almost as if ghostly. Eco's role will now include protecting this girl, Yorda, from the relentless shadows attacking her. All of this while solving puzzles together. The game is a masterpiece and it's been praised worldwide. It's definitely the least underrated in this video and you might actually argue against it being here. I don't blame you, but I just wish it could be treated separately from Shadow of the Colossus so its ratings will increase considerably. After all, they're two completely different games. Number 2. Suikoden 3 The Suikoden series is pretty popular nowadays, is it? It's gained a well-deserved recognition out there. Still, most people seem to only praise 1 and 2 on the PS1, and the competition for the best is always between 2 and 5. I can't argue, those two are my favorites as well. But 3 doesn't stay behind at all, and while it isn't a masterpiece, it's still an excellent RPG. It's just, well, different. Instead of having only one protagonist, this one has four, each with personality, each with their own chapters, roots, and party members. But obviously at one point they all merge to form one final group of 108 stars of destiny. 
So the combat was also changed here, you can only control a row of one or two characters instead of selecting commands for the whole party, something that makes this game very hard oftentimes. In war battles you can only select one action for the entire group, so your commander and their soldiers will fight by themselves against their enemies. Finally, the duels weren't really that off this time, but they introduced the dual gauge, which is pretty easy to manipulate. In conclusion, there's nothing wrong with this game, and I still think it's fantastic, but it's perhaps the most underrated in the series just for being different than the others. Number 1. Hunting Ground Originally called Demento, this PS2 exclusive is only popular for being very expensive and rare nowadays. It's been its curse for a long time, which means there aren't a lot of reviews out there. Capcom wanted to continue with the Clock Tower series after 3, but now with some new additions and several different gameplay mechanics, like for example a dog being playable ally, However, once they saw the game had enormous potential, it was enough for it to become its own game. Nevertheless, a few controversies occurred thanks to the sexualization of the main character Fiona, but reviewers attacked more stupidly in my opinion its gameplay mechanics, saying it was repetitive and predictable? Nice! A game so predictable while your stalkers chase you constantly and may appear out of nowhere! Super predictable! Anyway, to each their own, I strongly believe the gameplay is excellent. The goal is to find a way to escape the ginormous castle. This while every chapter a new enemy will stalk you on a regular basis, so you need to hide from them until eventually you can defeat them. Controlling Fiona and giving commands to Huey, the dog, is totally fine, but also clunky on purpose to stress out the player and create a more disturbing experience. So no matter what people say about the gameplay or the controls, everything is perfectly justified, even the sexualization of Fiona. More people need to play this masterpiece, and I know it's alarmingly pricey, but well, ever heard of emulation? Alright, those were my picks for today's video, 5 underrated games on the PS2 that need more recognition and better rating in my opinion as always. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!